Hello, my name is Paul Miners, and welcome back to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I'm gonna share how to get started with iCloud Drive. I'm gonna start by explaining why I use iCloud Drive for both my personal and my business or my work-related documents and folders, and then I'm gonna share some of the tips and tricks for how I use it to keep really organized and, and manage all of my documents. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Okay, let me start by explaining why I use iCloud Drive instead of something like Dropbox or Google Drive. Now, if you don't care about any of this, feel free to skip forward in this video if you just want to get straight into the practical stuff. Otherwise, feel free to keep listening. So I used to use Dropbox before iCloud Drive got a lot better. It wasn't very good for a while when Apple first came out with iCloud. Uh, but over the years, iCloud Drive has improved significantly. So I got to the point a couple of years ago where uh, I was asking this question, you know, should I use iCloud Drive? Because I use the iPhone, I work on a Mac every single day, I have an iPad. And so it just the main reason really is that it just kind of made sense for me as a heavy Apple user. It makes sense to use Apple's default document and cloud storage product, iCloud Drive, because it works so well within the Apple ecosystem. That honestly is the main reason I use iCloud Drive. I would actually argue that tools like Dropbox and Google Drive are actually better at sharing documents or if you work in a team, if you do a lot of collaborative work and you're sharing spreadsheets and, and collaborating on documents a lot, Google Drive has a, a suite of products like Google Sheets and Google Docs, which are really great for collaboration. But my, for my requirements, I don't really need too much of that. I do sometimes use Google Drive in my business. If I get invited to a document, I will use it a little bit. But I've chosen to use iCloud Drive as my primary cloud storage and document storage tool because it just works so well within the Apple ecosystem. There's nothing extra to download. And uh, a really big positive of that is that there's, it's not putting too much strain on the CPU. I've seen with apps like Dropbox and uh, Google Drive, once you download them, um, they, they take up a bit more CPU usage. They put a bit more strain on your Mac. Whereas with iCloud Drive, because it's native and just built into the Apple ecosystem, it works really well. Another big reason for my switch is that, as you'll see later in this video, I use some tags in the Finder to group different files together. Uh, a simple example is I have a, a tag called favorite, which is what I use to favorite documents, spreadsheets, PDFs that I want to get quick access to. And so I've tagged a bunch of my files, but if I have those stored in Dropbox, so I'm using the Finder to store the files, but they're actually syncing with Dropbox, then those tags don't work when I go to the Dropbox app on the iPhone. So that was a real pain. And that was another key reason for switching everything over into iCloud Drive is to benefit from some of those organizational features like tags. So let's get into this video. And before we go too far, I wanna talk about iCloud storage because your iCloud Drive, which is this uh, area in the Finder where you can store documents and files and things, that is using your iCloud storage, which also gets used in your Apple account for things like photos, email, contacts, calendars, things like that. So all your iCloud services, including Google Drive, share your iCloud storage. So if you come to your uh, system preferences and click on Apple ID, you can manage your storage down here. You can see I have two terabytes. Uh, we're on a family plan, so I'm actually sharing this storage with my wife. And because we have some HomeKit cameras set up at home, we're actually required to be on this two terabyte plan to store the video from our HomeKit system. But you can change your storage plan in here. You can choose how much storage you're gonna need. Most people, most people on an iPhone need more than the default amount. I think from memory, you get about five gigs when you when you first purchase an Apple device and set up an iCloud account. Most people need to pay for a bit more. You can buy, buy just 50 gigs for $1.69 per month. This is uh, New Zealand dollars. Um, because that is, if you have a lot of photos on your iPhone and if you're backing up your photos to the, to the cloud, which I recommend that you do, then uh, that's gonna consume a lot of your iCloud storage and it's gonna leave less for use with iCloud Drive. So just check how much storage you're using, make sure you have plenty available. As you can see, I've got plenty of um, iCloud storage left in my plan. While we're on this screen, you'll see there is, uh, you can see all the different services that are using your iCloud data. And if we go to iCloud Drive here, you'll see there are some options. You can see different services that are using iCloud. And you'll notice, for example, some services like Shortcuts here. This is one of the Apple services that I use. It's syncing data through iCloud. So you'll actually notice in the Finder, 
I'm under the iCloud tab here. I have a bunch of folders. And so this app folder here has appeared because I'm using iCloud Drive to sync shortcuts between my Mac and my iPad. And so you'll notice a few of those appearing in this folder uh, for things like I've got this paper app, post-its as well. It, those services or those apps are using iCloud Drive to send data between different devices. Something else you'll want to just have a look at before you get started is if you click the Apple icon in the uh, top left of your screen and click about this Mac, and then if you go to storage and then click manage, you'll see some options come up and you'll see store in iCloud. All your files, photos, messages uh, are being stored in iCloud. And if you click on the store in iCloud, you'll see some extra options that you can turn on, including the option to sync anything on your Mac's desktop and documents. You can sync those to your other devices, which is kind of the whole point of iCloud Drive. So make sure you have that turned on. And again, with your photos, if you're paying for storage, if you've taken lots of precious photos, you wanna have this photos option turned on um, so that you're, you're uploading those photos to the cloud. And you'll see in both cases here that your Mac is actually going to free up space once it starts to run out of room. So it says here, all files, photos, and messages in iCloud, uh, you can store them and save space on this Mac automatically when it's needed. So we'll look at that in a little bit because I'll have some files in my iCloud storage that aren't actually on my Mac anymore. They're just in the cloud and my Mac can access them if I need to. So we'll have a look at that in a little bit. So let's take a look at iCloud Drive in the Finder here. We've got this iCloud Drive section in the sidebar. And as I've pointed out already, you have some of these little app folders for apps and services that are using iCloud to sync data. You'll also notice a downloads and a desktop folder. This is actually the files on my desktop, and this is the files in my downloads folder, which I can sync to iCloud and keep a backup of if I need to. In both cases, you'll see with me, I don't keep anything on my desktop. Um, I don't keep anything in my downloads. Once I finish with a file, I will either delete it if I don't need it, or if I want to keep anything, everything, all of my files, all of my documents go into this documents folder. And you see I've got that on my sidebar as a favorite as well. And so when I talk about iCloud Drive, really I'm talking about this documents folder. This is where all of my documents, both personal and work or business related, live. So inside this personal folder, I've got various files and things, and I have subfolders for different personal files. So I've got property, you know, documents related to our house. I've got some photos. I've got an archive of old things, some home videos, uh, a folder for insurance documents, things like that. And then in the work folder, this is again broken down into different categories. So I have folders for things like accounting and admin, um, files and documents related to the, the consulting that I do. Media is things like design files and images. I've got my podcast episodes, products, other resources, and, and anything related to my business stored somewhere in here. In case you're interested, I've actually got a separate video all about how I organize my files and my folders and how I use some tags and things. So go ahead and click the linked video up here if you want to see how to keep your finder and your documents more organized. When I'm ready to upload a file or document to my iCloud Drive, if I want it stored online, I wanna make sure I have that backup online, I wanna make sure I have it accessible on all of my devices, it is as simple as simply dragging that file into your documents. And if you watch really quickly there, it happened almost too quickly, we saw that little pinwheel icon uh, appearing in the iCloud Drive, which shows that the file was uploading uh, to the cloud. So I'll do that again so that you can see it. There you go, it's uploading. And uh, you can click on that to, to track its progress, but this is a pretty small file, so it uploaded pretty quickly. And that's it. I've, I've put this spreadsheet in, in this folder. Now, if I go to my iPad, my iPhone, I can access that on any of my devices. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, one of the reasons I like to use iCloud Drive is to use tags on the Finder and on my iPhone and iPad to organize and access certain types of files. And you can see those tags here on the sidebar. You can see I've got one called favorite. This is probably my most commonly used tag. And I use this as a way of quickly getting access to some folders you can see here, documents, images, and things that I use on a frequent basis. So for example, this logo, which sometimes I have to upload to various places, or my, my uh, profile picture here, I keep those favorited so I can quickly access them. 
I also have some tags for things like processes. This is kind of like SOP, standard operating procedure documentation that I want to get quick access to. I also have a template tag for things like proposals, agreements, and uh, basically documents that are templates. I have a download template. These are for the downloads and things that I sell on my website. This tag is basically all of the products that I offer. And I have some free resources that I've given away on my website as well. So I have this resource tag, which I can uh, use to quickly access those. And so if I go back to my documents, if I go into the work folder and consulting, you'll see some of the documents in here have that tag. You can see the little red dot next to some of these or the green dot here next to some of these images and folders down here. And so you can apply a tag by right clicking and I can simply add a tag uh, using, using the menu here. You'll also notice in this folder, some of the files here have this little cloud icon next to them. So if you remember what I said before, there is an option where you can have your Mac optimize storage and iCloud Drive can offload files and free up space on your Mac if you haven't accessed a file in a while. So for example, this, this document here, this audit template, I haven't used this file in, in a while. And so iCloud's determined, look, you're not, you haven't used this in a while. Let's just remove it from your Mac. You can still see the icon here so I can access it, but it's not actually on my Mac anymore. And so this little cloud icon basically is telling me it's in the cloud and I can download it if I want to. So I can either right click and click download now, or I can click this little cloud icon. And again, you'll see the little loading uh, icon there. It was actually pretty quick. Now I have downloaded this file so I can open it. I can edit this. If I want to remove the download, if I want to free up some space on my Mac, I can right click and remove the download. And basically the reverse happens. Now it's removed from my Mac. You see that little, Clyde, that little cloud icon has reappeared. And so it's now in my iCloud drive and I've freed up some space on my Mac, which is really handy. If you ever want to share documents or folders, there's a couple of ways we can do that. And as I mentioned in the intro, I actually think the sharing options in Google Drive and Dropbox are a little bit better, but you know, I'm, I'm happy and, and what, what iCloud Drive offers kind of works for me. So you can see actually this, this folder has already been shared. It's got this little sort of person icon next to it. So if I right click and go to share and go to manage shared folder, I can see um, other people that I have shared this folder with. So Warwick here, who's my colleague, he, um, he can access this folder. He also has permission to make changes you can see here. If I want, I could give him view only access. If I don't want him making any changes, I could do that. But because we're both adding and contributing to this folder, I've given him permission there. I can, if I want to, I can copy a link and, and send this to him again, or I can stop sharing. And so anything I put into this folder, this is where I put my videos ready to be edited. Uh, Warwick, who also has an iCloud account, he can access these. And so any changes that he makes on his Mac will sync and reflect back here on my Mac. So it works really well for people who are both in the Apple ecosystem, who are both, uh, you know, have iCloud accounts. Sometimes I may want to just share an individual file and send somebody a link where they can download it. And so an easy way to do that is you can right click, go down to share again. And then if you click on share file, this is where, like I showed before, you can either email or message somebody who has an iCloud account and you can, you can give them access to that folder in their own iCloud drive. Or if you're trying to share a file or a folder with somebody who doesn't have an iCloud account, I'll use the copy link option. And then instead of saying people who I invite, I'll just say anyone with the link. And then I'll say, can view the file. So all I'm doing is just copying a link. Anyone with the link can see this and they've got view access. I'll click share and now I've copied a link to my clipboard. When I, when I send that link to someone via email, uh, they will see a, a web page that looks like this. They can either add it to their iCloud drive if they have an iCloud account, or they can just simply download a copy and that's sort of a simple way that I can share a folder to, with somebody who doesn't necessarily have iCloud. And so there we go, that is a little look at iCloud Drive. If you are like me, you are an Apple user and you have a Mac, an iPhone, an iPad, and you just work in the Apple ecosystem a lot, iCloud Drive is a great option. As I mentioned in the intro, not quite as powerful or good at collaboration as tools like Google Drive or Dropbox, but for me and for my needs, this is a great option. Doesn't require any additional downloads and it's a really nice, simple, easy to use tool. In classic Apple fashion, it just works. Again, if you have any questions after this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.